In this lecture, we'll be looking at the emergence of Greek civilization over time. Historians often divide Greek history into um, periods, as indicated on the screen here. Uh, we should note that not all historians are in agreement um, about these periodization um, schemes or even the dates associated with them. For the purposes of this course, um, you will not be required to memorize these dates. Uh, the Greek Dark Ages, uh, this term is beginning to fall out of use as originally the idea of a Dark Ages was related to the lack of archaeological evidence that existed. But in recent decades, we have been getting better archaeological evidence from this period. These so-called Dark Ages ended with the rise of city-states, which we'll examine later in the lecture. Uh, Archaic Greece, uh, this period is associated with the emergence of the polis, P-O-L-I-S, which we'll talk about in a few slides, and the uh, creation of Greek colonies throughout the Mediterranean world. This time period is also associated with beginnings of sophisticated Greek philosophy, theater, and poetry. Classical Greece uh, is a period often considered the, the height of Greek culture, uh, the, the period in which um, with which most Westerners are familiar with Greece. It's noted for advanced architecture and mathematics and science, literature and philosophy. Hellenistic Greece is a period that begins with the conquests of Alexander the Great. And it ends with the conquest of Greek territories by the Romans. Many observers have traditionally viewed this period as one of decline or even decay. Um, but it should be mentioned that this era was not without its scientific and artistic achievements. Now, the term Hellenistic is derived from Hellene, the Greeks traditional name for themselves and historians um, have used this term to reflect the wider spread of Greek culture throughout the Mediterranean world but some historians I should note uh, prefer not to use this term. And finally Roman Greece, this is the period in which the territories of Greece were part of the Roman Empire as, as provinces. One of the precursors to the development of Greek civilization is the Minoan civilization, a civilization that rose on the island of Crete, which you can see at the bottom of the map on this slide. Um, trade was the basis of power and wealth in Minoan civilization. It's named after a, 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 a mythical king, Minos. Um, he's noted throughout Greek mythology in uh, myths regarding the labyrinth and the Minotaur. Um, this was a Bronze Age culture with a proto-Greek writing system. It was rediscovered at the beginning of the 20th century by British archaeologists. Another predecessor and in influence on Greek civilization was the Mycenaean civilization. Um, the language of the Mycenaeans shares similarities to Greek. They were probably ancestors of peoples who would one day be unified as Greeks. Um, territorial conquest was the basis of their power. Um, until the mid-20th century, the predominant theory was that there was a so-called Dorian invasion um, that led to the downfall of Mycenaean civilization. Um, historians are beginning to question that, not the least of which is there's no real archaeological or historical evidence of a Dorian invasion. Um, climate change, natural disasters, and disease probably played a role in the um, collapse of Mycenaean civilization. And despite 200 years of investigation, the truth of this uh, purported Dorian invasion has never been proved. In terms of the ethnic groups that make up or made up what we would today call Greeks, we need to differentiate between the mythical tribes of Greek literature and the documentable ethnic groups who were present with unique Greek dialects by the start of the classical period. Uh, the Dorians, you can see on the map, uh, tended toward the southwest of the Peloponnesian Peninsula. The Achaeans, who used a, a Dorian uh, dialect. The Aeolians, 
They are uh, noted for being in the region of uh, Thessaly and uh, Asia Minor or modern day Turkey. You can see they are to the east. And uh, the other large ethnic group that would uh, one day become part of this Greek ethnic identity are the Ionians, uh, kind of in the center of uh, the Aegean Sea and to the eastern edge of the Peloponnesian Peninsula. There is a uh, period we mentioned earlier of the Greek Dark Ages. This is sometimes called the Homeric Era in reference to the writer Homer, the author of the Iliad and the Odyssey. Um, one of the reasons why we have referred to it as the Dark Ages, as mentioned earlier, was a lack of archaeological evidence. Um, modern 21st century historians, of course, believe um, there were some vibrant communities and some significant um, cultural exchange throughout the region, um, and the idea of a dark ages again is uh, is fading. Um, we we do believe that the collapse of the Mycenaean civilization created turmoil in the uh, Eastern Mediterranean. There seems to have been a drop in population during this particular era, at least through most of it by the eighth century, that began to change. Um, this time period is noted for the emergence of a new alphabet system adopted from the Phoenicians. This evolved into a true alphabet system that would become the Greek alphabet, unlike the vowel-less abjad system, A-B-J-A-D system, which is uh, more of a Semitic type of script. Um, this period is also noted for the rise of the polis, P-O-L-I-S. Polis in uh, the modern terminology is usually translated as a city-state. Um, it was centered around an acropolis, a high ground area. Um, they were um, poles of political and commercial economic power. The agora was the social center in the financial marketplace. Typically it was located on a centrally located large open space. There were a number of distinct features of the typical polis. They featured temples, altars, and sacred areas. These polis uh, would typically exhibit central planning, especially a, a grid system of roads. Theaters could be found there, as well as gymnasia, which were facilities for the training of athletes. And this became the dominant form of uh, political and social organization in the classical period of Greek history. The period uh, of, Greek, of significant Greek expansion occurs in the 8th and 7th centuries BCE. City-state colonies began rising all around the Mediterranean basin. Uh, colonies appeared as far west as modern-day Spain and into present-day Israel and Lebanon. Uh, this was a time of significant trade and industry growth and also the rise of a, a wealthy, non-noble merchant class. We turn next to a period uh, often called the Age of the Tyrants. Uh, tyranny is ruled by a person who seized power in the polis. Originally it did not have this negative connotation, and uh, Plato would be one of the first philosophers that would exemplify these negative attitudes toward tyrants. I mean, we use the word today, tyrant, in a very negative manner, but it was not always the case. Um, tyrants might be benevolent. Tyrants in this era might be uh, cruel, but the, the, the position itself was not necessarily a negative thing. Um, this tradition of tyrants did break the power that the aristocracy held. On Greek cultural, social, and uh, political life, but it was sometimes very oppressive. This map shows you the location of the major Greek city states in the Peloponnesian Peninsula and uh, throughout the Aegean Sea and Eastern Mediterranean. We'll next take a look at some of the major city states individually. Sparta was the first uh, major Greek city state. Um, Sparta was victorious over Athens in the Peloponnesian War, which you'll read about in your text. Sparta was ruled by uh, two kings and a council of elders. 
the two king system ideally was to keep uh, a, a, to serve as a check against uh, one individual uh, assuming too much power. Everything in Sparta revolved around the military and um, many Spartans um, devoted all or most of their lives to service in the military and the height of its power was in the very late 5th and into the 4th century BCE. Athens uh, was a, a major center of Greek political, cultural, and intellectual life. It was uh, continuously habited, inhabited for over 3,000 years. Uh, by the 4th century BCE there were about 300,000 inhabitants in Athens. Um, it is often referred to as the birthplace of democracy as democratic traditions emerged here, although they were significantly different than modern democracy. Women, for example, could not vote, and less than half of all adult Athenian males were eligible to vote. Thebes had an important role in Greek mythology. It was the site of the stories of Oedipus, Dionysus, who is the uh, son of Zeus and the god of drink. Uh, the Thebans sided with the Persians during the 480 BCE invasion by Xerxes. At one point uh, during the Macedonian conquest, it was the most powerful city-state. And uh, it ruled over the Baetian plain. You can't really see it on this map. You can see Thebes. This was an important agricultural region at one time, so control of the Baetian Plain uh, meant control over a, a great deal of agriculture in the region. Corinth is another city with a long history of human inhabitation, over 8,000 years of continuous um, human activity. Um, it was a major trade center. Uh, it was known in classical Greece as a very expensive place to live. Um, it was famous for the temple prostitutes of Aphrodite, or at least famous to modern readers, although there's significant dispute among historians as to the extent to which this occurred, this sort of sacred prostitution, or if this was merely a form of uh, historical slander against rival city-states and ethnic groups. So there's uh, quite a lively debate um, as to whether or not this, this uh, perceived tradition of temple prostitution really occurred. Uh, the trireme was developed uh, by the Corinthians. Triremes were uh, ancient galley ships used in war. There's a picture of one here, though rarely as merchant vessels. And if you look at the front of the ship, you can see a metallic uh, ramming device. One of the techniques used uh, by captains of triremes was to um, get a full uh, head of speed going there and to, to ram opposing ships punctured puncturing holes in their hulls. The term trireme refers to the three rows of oars on each side of the vessel on, on the typical ship. A typical trireme had a, a between 150 and 180 oars with the one man or one sailor per oar. Crew sizes were typically about 200 sailors. A triremes could travel anywhere from 50 to 100 miles per day depending on weather conditions and they had top speeds approaching 10 knots per hour. Humans have inhabited the site of Olympia since at least the 10th century BCE. The city was the original home of the Olympic Games. Historians believe that the first Olympic Games were held in 776 BCE. Olympia was uh, certainly the center of Greek religious life and it was also um, famous for the Temple of Zeus. This is a, uh, an animated depiction of what um, the Temple of Zeus likely uh, looked like in the 5th century BCE. It was constructed uh, between 472 and 456 BCE. The temple held the famed statue of Zeus, which you cannot see in this particular image. Uh, the temple, uh, excuse me, the statue of Zeus was one of the seven wonders of the ancient world. The statue and the throne upon uh, which Zeus sat contained gold, uh, precious gemstones, and ivory. Um, the temple's size 
and uh, ornamentation far surpassed any contemporary construction and people would travel um, thousands of miles to, to visit this site. They were so o overawed by its appearance. And this brings to a close our brief um, examination of the rise of Greek civilization.